Until a few years back, if you wanted a bobber, you had to shell out a huge amount on brands like Triumph or Harley Davidson. Or if you wanted something cheaper, you had to customize a conventional motorcycle into one. But now, bobber fanatics can directly visit the Java showroom and get this. This is their newest offering, the 42 bobber, and as you can clearly see, it is one gorgeous looking motorcycle. But just like every bobber out there, is it all about form? Or there's more to it than just a heartwarming design? To answer that question, we have done a detailed review of the motorcycle and uh, the link to that video has been attached in the description below. Now, what we are doing in this video is we are comparing it with the Royal Enfield Classic 350. Now this motorcycle needs no introduction at all. It has successfully existed in the market for years and it received its major update just last year and we have been riding it since then and uh, it has impressed us on many fronts. Now let's cut to the chase. Let's say you want a modern classic motorcycle and your budget is between 2 to 2.5 lakh rupees. Which one of these would make more sense in terms of carrying out your commuting and touring duties? And should you choose form over function? Let's find out. The day the 42 Bobber was launched in India, everyone at Bikewale was gawking and admiring its pictures, mainly for its styling. So it looks clean, minimalistic and really pleasing to the eyes. And interestingly, it seems to have taken inspiration from the Triumph Bonville Bobber. I mean, uh, the peanut chip fuel tank, the scoop seat, uh, the chop fenders, bar and mirrors, uh, the slash cut exhaust. And the overall stance looks inspired by the Bonnie and uh, we aren't complaining because, well, the end result is a good one. Now, moving on to the classic 350. On any given day, even this can pretend to be a bobber. All you have to do is just remove the pillion seat, just like we did. Uh, well, we agree it uh, doesn't look as pure a bobber as that one and it might not attract as much attention on the road. But the classic 350 isn't a bad looking motorcycle by any stretch. In fact, its vintage styling is one of the reasons uh, for it being the best selling motorcycle in its segment for years now. Now on the quality front, the Classic 350 is a notch ahead. Not that the 42 Bobber has any serious quality issues. In fact, it is much better than the Java bikes we had tested long back when the brand was relaunched in India. Both bikes boast even panel gaps, sturdily put together components and a good paint finish. Even the switches are nice and tactile on both motorcycles. However, the 42 Bobber could do with better finishing on blacked out components like the exhaust and wheel rims more neatly done welds and more precise cuts on the engine cooling fins. Before I hop on the bikes and uh, get to the riding part, let's see which one of these is easier to move around. Now the 42 Bobber is uh, lighter than the classic 350, so uh, taking it off the stand and pushing it around is uh, relatively easier. But one problem here is that these bar and mirrors keep hitting your wrist as you turn the handlebar and we had pointed out this same issue uh, during the Java Perak and the 42 2.1 review. Now, uh, what you can do is you can uh, hold the seat to move the bike, but even this seat is set so low that you have to bend down a bit too much. Also, there's nothing uh, as such to hold on to like a scoop or a grab rail, so that makes it a bit unnatural. Now, as with the classic, there's no such issue as the mirrors hitting your wrist or you also have uh, these handles to hold on to. But it is heavier than the 42 and in spite of that, it feels more natural and uh, easier to move the classic. And that's obviously because uh, it is taller and uh, you can easily reach out to the handlebar. Uh, now talking about which one of these is more comfortable in terms of seating ergonomics, uh, the 42 Bobber, uh, the seat height is very low and accessible, so shorter riders will really appreciate this aspect of the motorcycle. And once you are seated, you realize you, are, you sit in a typical Bobber fashion, you have this wide handlebar at your disposal, you are bent a little bit and uh, the foot pegs are uh, forward set but not much, so it's decently comfortable. But one issue here is the scoop design of the seat and uh, it doesn't allow you to move around a bit on the seat. So if you are a large size individual and you plan to do 
uh, fairly long distance rides, uh, this might be a problem. Now moving on to the classic, the seat height is a little taller, but getting on board is not an issue and neither is getting your feet on the ground. And once you are seated, you are uh, sitting more upright, you are sitting in a more neutral riding position and uh, the issue of not having space uh, on the seat is not here because uh, the cushioning and the space of the seat is ample. So even if you are a large size individual, you won't have any issues uh, over long distance riding. The engines of these bikes are profoundly different in terms of specifications and modernity. The 42 Bobber is more impressive on paper with its power and torque output of 30.2 bhp and 32.74 nm respectively. This 334cc motor gets liquid cooling, 4 valves per head and it comes mated to a 6-speed gearbox. On the other hand, the Classic 350 gets a more traditional air-cooled 2-valve setup with a 5-speed gearbox. Also, its 349cc motor makes lesser power and torque at 20.2 bhp and 27 Nm. Before I get to the riding part and tell you how these specifications fare out on the road, let's listen to the exhaust sounds of these motorcycles. Starting with the bobber. Now on to the classic. The engine characters of both bikes are as different as their specifications. The 42 Bobber runs on an oversquare engine with a bore size larger than the stroke which translates into a peaky and high revving nature. The Bobber likes to be revved, accelerates briskly, majorly after 4000 rpm and keeps building up pace spiritedly almost until its red line. In a nutshell, it is substantially quicker than the classic 350. Even at speeds of around 90 to 100 kmph, there's enough pull to execute quick overtakes on the highway. However, acting as the chink in its armor are the vibrations which creep in on the bar at around 80 kmph and keep on increasing as the speeds rise. The Classic, on the other hand, is powered by a longer stroke engine which favors a more relaxed and relatively lazier performance. While there's a decent pull from the low end to mid-range, it doesn't like to be revved hard like the bobber. While it can easily do 100 to 110 kmph on the highway, the journey to those speeds is comparatively slower and overtakes need to be planned. However, the Classic is almost free of vibrations, even while cruising at high speeds. While riding in the city, there are several aspects of the bobber which are admirable. If you are in the right gear, pulling off overtakes is a quick affair. Even the slipper clutch is extremely light and easy to operate. And despite its long wheelbase, the lighter curb weight makes it more agile than the classic to filter through traffic. However, what hampers the overall experience is the gearbox, which, after a few minutes of riding, becomes extremely clunky and reluctant to shift you have to literally stamp down on the gear lever for downshifting. Also, the engine doesn't like to be in higher gears at lower speeds. For instance, if you are in 5th gear at 40 kmph, the acceleration from there is accompanied by a mechanical and disturbing knocking sound along with vibrations. Slow speed riding is more enjoyable on the Classic 350. The commendable tractability of the motor means you can keep trudging along in 5th gear at 30 to 35 kmph of speed and the pull to the higher speeds is clean. Also, there's barely any hint of knocking or vibrations and the classic keeps chugging along smoothly. Although the clutch is heavier than the bobber, the crispness of the gearbox makes riding it slow a cakewalk. However, when it comes to filtering through traffic, the classic needs to be muscled considerably more than the Java. 
As you encounter bad patches of road, the Java needs to be ridden extremely slow due to its stiff ride quality. You can feel almost every surface imperfection and the shock only intensifies with rising speeds. Even the smallest potholes or road joints send a nasty jolt if you aren't slow enough. And while riding on the highway, slight dips and crests keep it bobbing continuously. Meanwhile, the Classic 2 has a firm edge to its ride but doesn't get as uncomfortable as the bobber. While you can feel undulations here as well, the suspension feels plusher and absorbent. On the highway, in particular, the Classic's ride is considerably more settled and composed. Now, come across a set of corners and the bobber feels easier to tip in and stick to the line. It feels easy to steer and lighter on its feet. However, it has limited ground clearance due to its low profile and the exhaust cans start scraping in no time. Whereas, the Classic can be leaned more than the bobber, but tipping it needs more effort and it feels a little wobbly if your inputs aren't smooth. The bobber is also slightly more efficient in the braking department as the front disc has a good amount of bite with decent lever feedback. It's the same story with the rear brake. The Classic, meanwhile, demands you to pull the front brake lever quite hard and even the bite takes some time to kick in. On the feature front, the bobber is definitely leading the battle. It gets a fully digital LCD console, LED headlamp and tail lamp, a slipper clutch, USB type A and type C charging ports and hazard lamps. Also, the seat can be adjusted in two steps. While the classic misses out on LED lighting, a slipper clutch, a type C charging port and hazard lamps, it does get the turn by turn navigation system by RE, which the Java is deprived of. But do note that the tripper navigation is available only in the top end trim of the Classic as standard. The prices of the Classic 350 start from Rs 1.90 lakh and go up to Rs 2.21 lakh depending on the color variant and ABS setup. On the other hand, the most affordable single tone color trim of the Java costs Rs 2.06 lakh and the dual tone iteration is pegged at Rs 2.09 lakh. All these prices are ex showroom Delhi. After that detailed scrutiny, we have come to the conclusion that the Classic 350 is a more practical, uh, it's a more feel good and uh, more finished product. Uh, the 42 Bobber looks like a missed opportunity to me. It has so many ingredients to be a desirable motorcycle, uh, like the agile handling, better brakes, punchy acceleration, and decent amount of modern features. Also, as you can see, it looks gorgeous. Uh, but all of these traits are overshadowed by the crudeness of the engine, uh, the fussy character of the gearbox and the harsh ride quality. Now the Classic on the other hand uh, delivers a more pleasant riding experience uh, with better ride quality, smoother engine and it boasts better fit and finish. More importantly it comes with a pillion seat which apart from hauling a passenger can be used to mount luggage and uh, go mile munching. And if you want to make it a better tourer, you can also install Ari's official touring accessories. And as I said in the beginning, on any given day, if you want to make it look like a bobber, you can just strip it off that pillion seat. Uh, the 42 bobber on the other hand is for those who are really hell-bent on buying a good-looking bobber motorcycle and are ready to live with the niggles.